Hello, everybody. It is the 200th episode extravaganza. Welcome to the seventh rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. My name is Ryan T. Husk, and today we're going to go over the previous 199 episodes and just kind of talk <laughs> about our journey over the last four years. How are you today, Sirach? I'm good. I'm good. Not each 199 episodes, just like a general. No. <laughs> and we're not going to be covering 200 episodes because then we would give a recap on right now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> really, we just kind of want to. Oh, and we're, we're going to go over all that. But we're also going to be <laughs> looking forward all the way to the next generation, because starting next week, we will be covering next generation episodes with Denise Crosby, uh, and it's going to be so much fun. So uh, stay tuned for all that. We're going to be looking ahead to the next generation a little later on in this episode. But first things first, when when did this was Aaron Eisenberg's uh, fun conceptualization? Was it December of 2023 when he contacted you about this? I think it was right. 2023 that's sorry that's that's right that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's, december, <laughs> december yeah. of 2018 which was yeah. four years ago yeah um and the funny thing is that uh now 200 episodes into this podcast um i've officially done more work on this podcast than i did on deep space nonsense yeah i never thought that would actually be the case uh going into it i never you know thought it would even last as long as it has um when aaron first came with the idea i was just thinking okay well let's give this a try and see where it goes um there was no real expectation for a success actually on my part i just felt like <laughs> <laughs> i felt like you know it, it would be like two buddies hanging out and reminiscing on old times and that's that's essentially what it's become you know um mm. except you know that he's not here with us but it's still about us hanging out and reminiscing on old times and analyzing what what is taking place but uh, i never thought we'd come this far and it's kind of uh it's humbling and 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 really um, special to know that this vision that he had was able to really grow and become this community of people that are so amazing and that I care so deeply about. Yeah, and also uh, it's not just two hundred episodes that we've done. We've done two hundred episodes in our flagship show, the Seventh Rule T Seven R series. But we've also done over a hundred of the T7R2 series, which is all the new Star Trek of Prodigy, Paramount, uh, Picard, Strange New Worlds, uh, Discovery, and Lower Decks. Uh, we've also done the CNF videos, Captain Nog Forever videos. There are forty-seven of those. We've done a ton for virtual Trek cons. So uh, forty-seven. Uh, that's that's a cool number. That's, right? We're we're stopping there, right? Because yeah. <laughs> number one. That is the special Star Trek number, you know, what they always talk about, 40, Shields at 47 or Starbase 47. But also, uh, Aaron appeared in exactly 47 episodes of Deep Space Nine. So yeah, how he That's... had the perfect number for Star Trek. And so we're just going to copy that and just <laughs> stay right there at yeah. 47. It's not broke. Don't fix it. Uh... Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is a lot of uh, it's a lot of shows, a lot of episodes, but it's really been a journey about just getting to know Star Trek. And that's part of the the whole experience as well. It's it's getting to know Star Trek, getting to know the characters and how they relate to us in our own lives. I think that's this special journey that each and every one of us has in, in our own way. How does it affect us? You know, it affected me in so many different ways just by my own experiences and being there for it, but also now watching it from a different lens. Mm -hmm. um, it still continues to resonate and impact in my life. So I'm, I'm just grateful for this journey that uh, 
Aaron insisted that we go on. Yeah, yeah he was super excited about it. Uh, I remember talking with him in probably November, or December of 2018. I got to stop looking ahead. We're looking at 2023, <laughs> 2018. And he was super excited about this. And then when he mentioned your name, when he said, what about Ciroc? And he's like, I talked to Ciroc and Ciroc would be down. And I'm like, oh my God, this is the greatest idea ever. Jake and Nog, you know, like it, it was like this perfect match, you know? Uh, and then of, of course he brought on a uh, Jared Cooper as well, who he'd worked with uh, previously. And Jared was with us for the first few months, which was great uh, because he kind of handled certain producer things uh, that we were not fully equipped to handle or were not ready or didn't have the time to handle at first. And so once he left, um, you know, I kind of took over most of that burden, but thank goodness he was there for the first few months to kind of, you know, show us the ropes and, and be, you know, kind of like training wheels for us in a lot of ways. So that was great. And then, uh, and then you, me and Aaron moved on to deep space nine in may of 2019 and uh i have to say though sirak your metamorphosis throughout all this has been incredible because like you said when you when you first popped in you're like hanging out you're like "Ah, just hanging out with some buddies reminiscing talk and then as you grew the show grew because you know you and i i think it was after Aaron, you know, sadly passed away and we didn't know really what to do or how to do it, it kind of forced us to start taking like avid notes and <laughs> extensive, you know, thoughts and all this because we ha- really had to step it up uh, in Aaron's absence because we didn't have Aaron to kind of lead us or guide us or bring the energy. We had to kind of provide it ourselves. And, uh, you've had like this huge transformation. It's been amazing to watch or to listen to where now you're like this Star Trek savant. It's so cool. Like now when we're reviewing (laughs) episodes, you go, remember back in that episode, whatever. I'm like, God, I've watched this series like three or four times and I don't remember this stuff. It's been pretty amazing. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Um, It's been amazing working with you. And, um, and all of our team is just so, so special. But in regards to that particular issue, I felt like a responsibility that I owed to Aaron to kind of like, you know, when we were, when we decided that we were going to continue to go forward, because, you know, that was the big thing, whether we were going to continue or not, you know, and when Aaron passed away, it felt like, oh, this is a crossroads right here. Do we just walk away from this whole thing? Or do we continue? And really the idea was that the best way to honor him and to continue, you know, to pay tribute to his memory was to do the thing that he had this vision for. And so I think that was one of the big things that motivated us to continue to go forward. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, having made that decision, it was also about, okay, now we got to step it up and actually, you know, do this. And like you said, Aaron does so much. It's easy to lean on him as a crutch because he just can just, he can take over a conversation and you can, you can sit back and just, just, just <laughs> nod your head and, and, and giggle. Nod and your laugh head. And laugh. Yeah. Nod your head. Just nod your head. And, um, and you could just soak in a lot of what he says. And he's so good at just being, you know, a, a general on the floor when he's speaking that um, that it was easy to kind of lean on him as a crutch. And when we didn't have that anymore, it was it was more of a responsibility on us to kind of not only um, kind of pick up that slack, but also get into these episodes and really dissect what we're looking at. Because I remember Aaron was very adamant about dissecting certain shots that directors took, uh, different approaches that actors took. And that was one of the things Aaron was very passionate about was like really looking and dissecting some of these, these things. So yes. I felt like we had to kind of dig in deeper. Yeah. Pick up that, uh, you know, that baton and, and carry that 
forward. So uh, it's been it's been great. I've I've learned so much, and thanks to Ira and all of the writing the writers yeah. at of Deep Space Nine that put this whole thing together because they gave us a lot of ammunition to dissect. It wasn't like you know, simple stuff where you can just say, all right, well, that's pretty much face value stuff. You know, it's a bank robbery episode and they roped the bank. I mean, it's just, what else do you want? Um, no, there was a lot more nuance there. There's a lot more meaning to take away. There's so many cultural references. There's historic references. I yeah. mean, these writers layer laced us with so many gems to just kind of take apart. And we probably only took apart 10% of, how much material is in there, you know, how many references to books, how many quotes from, you know, authors that we, we didn't recognize on the watch throughs. Right. right. Which is why we're going to be continuing to cover deep space nine in a, in a different way. We're going to be doing monthly deep space nine deep dives uh, to scratch a little bit more of that delicious deep space nine uh, surface. But also, I did want to uh, jump on what you were saying about Ira and the writers and them. It's amazing. Four years later, you know, since we started this show, how many of them have been on this show uh, celebrating Aaron, seeing Aaron's uh, vision come to life, uh, celebrating Star Trek and Deep Space Nine and really coming on and they've all been so gracious and so fun and so introspective and so intelligent. Like we really haven't had one bad guest. Well, there was that one, but no, I'm just kidding. But uh, <laughs> everybody JG said, don't talk about him like that. <laughs> <laughs> or he'll come on again and teach us a lesson. <laughs> no, but we, they've all been so wonderful and friendly and, the things that they've taught us, like the writers are so fun and interesting to listen to and insightful. And the actors are so gracious and fun. And it's just been just an amazing ride to see how many people have been willing to donate their time. I mean, it's usually for like an hour at a time or sometimes two or like in the in the case of of poor Ira and our and our what you leave behind review is like three hours, <laughs> and he was a trooper. He's like, "All right, I'm doing it." I'm like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> but they've been yeah. Fantastic. But you know, I, I I think of so many moments and just they're they're very small subtle moments that you have to catch in the conversations that we have. But you know, Ira talking about taking a trip up to Santa Barbara and driving back, and then thinking, "Oh, I got it. The last scene's going to yes. have Jake in it." Like small things like that give so much insight into where these ideas come from. And um, think, yeah, I think about these interviews, like with Nana being so gracious and, and giving us so many stories about, you know, how she approaches scenes and where and what her experiences were. And, um, you know, I, I remember her saying that Avery was the one that that said, pronounced my name Nana because everybody used to call her Nana or something like that. And I remember that it was Avery who said, how does your mother pronounce your name? And that's, that's how I'm going to say way. your name. Right. And so, um, I mean, just things like that, those are personal kind of insights into, you know, very um, intimate details of, of just how these relationships blossom and flourish uh, Sadiq talking about his Chrysler LeBaron and being on the, you know, the Paramount lot <laughs> and playing and video games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are like really great stories. And that, that's been part of the journey is learning these things and hearing these conversations and Robert Wolf kind of, you know, on the fence about whether he should stay or go uh, mm -hmm. in that fifth season and, and, and kind of regretting it to some degree. And so there's so many things that happened uh, throughout the course of, of, watching the show and, and interviewing and talking with these people that I feel so much more connected to the, sh the experience of, to watching the show, you know, it's like, Oh, I got more information. There's so much behind the scenes that went on. Yeah. And the community has really been unbelievably supportive as well. The fan community uh, where our, for example, our, our YouTube channel has well over 15,000 subscribers. Um, 
And we've had well over 1 million views on our channel. That's a million times that people have decided that they want to watch what we have to offer. And a lot of channels can maybe reach those kinds of numbers by producing daily episodes, constant content, you know. We basically have two weekly shows, you know. We first our our flagship show and then we're also doing uh the new stuff and to have that many subscribers when we're not just blasting tons of episodes out is it's really impressive and and really appreciated and the the fans of just how many times are when you're at a at a Star Trek convention does somebody come up to your table and tell you they like your show? <laughs> Never. I've, I haven't heard it once. Impossible uh, number one. <laughs> no, I, I get it all the time, and I'm really grateful for that too. It's just a, it's it's a humbling thing that people have uh, over the years really come to appreciate Deep Space Nine more and more, and um, the love has been um increasing i would say uh, over the years it's it's been tremendous um i'm going to be able to you know we talked earlier about next generation and doing this uh this first season um of next generation with uh, denise crosby mm -hmm. which i'm looking forward to i'm going to actually have uh something to compare deep space nine to so the Yes. On the one hand, you know, it's great that I've got Deep Space Nine, but I would like to compare it to the Star Trek of its era or its generation, let's say the same era relatively, which is which which would put up against Next Generation or Voyager for for me to see where how it stands up against those two. But um the new Star Trek suck, you know, soaking all of that in. I'm I'm really loving just the the actors on those shows uh you know and, and the relationships we've built with them uh it's, it's just been just the greatest journey doing this podcast ryan with you and and i'm grateful to everybody who's come on to support the the fans the the producers that we have that have just you know been with us through thick and thin and shared their yeah. personal their own personal ups and downs in lives and uh, i just feel like uh an extended family has been mm -hmm. created thanks to nog and and his vision good old nog yeah uh, and now he's infused in everything we do my background has is uh, a ferengi we've got a self-sealing stem bolt for the two of you right here in our shirt uh yeah he's everywhere and uh well let's let's take a super quick break and and on the other side talk about moving forward into next generation um but before we do that uh, I'm going to take a moment to heap praise on you, Sirach, because there is absolutely nobody that I would want to be taking this journey with. You have proven to be such an incredible partner. Like you're such a great guy. You're, you're, so, I, I, I can't believe how much you, you've stepped up to be, you know, just the best partner that anybody could hope for. And anytime I talk about you, after about five minutes of talking shit, I get to the, <laughs> I usually will tell people secretly that there's absolutely nobody that I'd want to go to war with every day uh, and, and share a scene or share a stage or share the internet with than you because of just how unbelievably open-minded and compassionate and gracious you are and how often you will give a, a a very friendly fake laugh to my stupid jokes and it doesn't go unnoticed and it's so it's so true like not nothing like Sinead O'Connor says nothing compares to you you you're an a plus person you're an a plus partner you're an a plus businessman and i thank my lucky stars i thank you the emissary for uh having you bestowed upon us we're very fortunate for it so <laughs> oh thanks you must have gotten the uh the text that i sent you to say that i'm glad that you, you yeah didn't leave i couldn't read it word for word so i tried to memorize <laughs> it did it work yeah, yeah it, was <laughs> it was pretty good pretty good. i missed the part about handsome you're you're handsome too <laughs> there you thank you thank <laughs> right. you 
Uh, <laughs> but let's uh, flip over to the other side real quick and talk about the next generation. We'll be right back, everybody, on the seventh rule. All right, we're back on the seventh rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. This is the special 200th episode celebration extravaganza. Can't you tell, you guys? We're just woo. Um, <laughs> so now Cue the champagne. I know. Oh, that's a screwdriver. Yeah, it's uh, a little. What is that thing? The a mimosa, right? Is that what mm. it is? So uh, let's look forward a little bit before we bring on our associate producers, who I'm sure will have a lot to say. Let's look forward to uh, Star Trek, The Next Generation. This is, uh, it's funny because by the time we hit the third season, I've said this before, but by the time we hit the third season of Deep Space Nine, I was already getting sad that it was going to be over soon. I was already like, it's going to be over soon. I'm enjoying this so much. I don't want the game to end. And it's so cool that we're moving on to another series and that Denise is joining us. And I was kind of wondering, for me, I'm getting this feeling that I didn't expect where I'm actually very happy to be revisiting Next Generation again. You know, it wasn't just like a calculated decision by us but for me it also it also gives me a happy feeling to know that we're going to go back and look at the people where it all started for me but i'm wondering for you what do you have any feeling or any sense or are you just kind of like you know like are you excited are you trepidatious uh are you just kind of like an open book where you're like i don't know what to expect i'm just gonna go in blindly and see what happens uh, no, I feel like, you know, in a similar way to Deep Space Nine, not in the exact same way, but in a similar way, I feel like I already know the characters. They've got yeah. they've got Worf on that show, right? Yep. So I already know Worf. O'Brien's on gonna be on there. I'm pretty much know him. Uh I know Marina as a person, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> she's gonna <laughs> so I'm gonna see a lot of that. Uh, and then, you know, guys like LeVar Burton and Brent Spiner, who I know, I feel like I have a pretty good grasp of the characters that they played and, and their personality type. So I'm just excited because I know them already, as well as, you know, the uh, I know knowing of Patrick Stewart. I don't really know him like that, but we're we've been in circles, you know, in the same rooms together. But I guess that's the thing that I'm really interested in knowing the most about. I want to discover the lure of Patrick Stewart and mm -hmm. Jean-Luc Picard. And that's one of the things because he has emerged as the person that I believe is the most relevant, not relevant, but uh, the most viewed captain. Um, mm -hmm. he's, on the, he's on the pilot of his own show. He's on the pilot of Deep Space Nine, and he's in the pilot of Picard. So he's in. He has started three. He's been in the beginning of three different shows, yeah. and um, that right there is in interesting to me. He also has this overlap. Does he have an overlap with the original series cast? Does it, has he? No. Mm -mm. Is there no overlap there? I mean, the only overlap is the original series cast coming over to Next Generation. Uh, there when, were a couple. There were a couple cast members from the original series. No spoilers that do cross over into Next Generation, but not vice versa. Like he, Picard didn't play like a young ensign on uh, the original series no, or anything like that. No, but he does have an overlap, though. He has scenes with original series yes characters as themselves as mm -hmm. the original series character, and right? one yeah and one movie as well uh the sixth movie uh star trek right. generations uh mm -hmm. that one had uh kirk and scotty and Chekhov, uh as well as the next generation crew is kind of like a a mixture or wait that was a right. uh, star trek seven 
yeah okay generation so my point is essentially that picard has the most overlap than any other person right i guess that's what i'm saying He's, he yeah. has an overlap with the original series. He has overlap with Deep Space Nine. He has overlap with the new incarnations of Star Trek, right? Mm-hmm. With this new iteration. So he has essentially transcended all of Star Trek. He's he's everywhere in Star Trek at some point or another. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, he's had he's had four movies and seven seasons of Next Generation, plus three seasons of Picard. Uh, and okay, well, some people will say, well, Worf was in those same four movies and he was in 11 seasons of Star Trek and it's about to be 12. So he's going to have more seasons of Star Trek than Picard. However, he doesn't have, here's the key. Star Trek Picard. Patrick Stewart has a a series named after him. (laughs) The show is called Star Trek Picard. So that's pretty big, uh, to your point. It's true that. He basically, you know, transcends movies, TV, and new Star Trek and has a series named after him. It, right. So yeah, that's what I want to get visible. to know. I want to know what created that legend. What what John Luke Picard has written on this show, how did it create that much of a legend for him or his portrayal of this character that it would transcend everything that it, it, it ties into kirk it ties into cisco it ties into seven of nine it ties into everything and i want to know you know who is this guy <laughs> you know who got my mom killed by the way you know i gotta get mm-hmm. to know this guy and i think uh that, that's the thing i'm looking forward to i and having watched picard now i kind of see the old version of him the you know uh, more frail but but more wise version of him i want to see the kind of the young in action kind of you know young captain picard version of him as opposed to this admiral version so i'm i'm really excited to see that that's what i'm and really I'll, looking forward to you seeing yeah. too actually is because you've seen 80 year old Picard basically. Right. And I'm really right. secretly, I haven't been saying anything about this, but I'm secretly waiting for you to see 1987, 47 year old Patrick Stewart and see how different he was much more commanding. He was much more of a presence. He felt like a military commander. And we kind of forget that because as the years progress, he kind of matured and and softened a bit and then it threw picard you know and picard he's completely in that direction but he's definitely in stark contrast uh when we you first start watching next generation um and we'll talk about how much of next generation we've actually seen on the other side in a few minutes but anyway uh what, what else were you saying there yeah that's the that's the biggest thing is um I also like to I'm really excited about seeing Jonathan Frakes playing number one, you know, because I like oh, Jonathan as a yes. person. He's part he's um he's one he's a lovable guy. Um and his energy is pretty much uh takes up the room. So I want to see how he plays this number one character. I'm sure he's a ladies' man because he's a ladies' <laughs> man. So yeah. you're gonna get to see <laughs> one of his nipples. Stay tuned for that. Well, you, you will know. see you will see a Riker nipple in the first season <laughs> that's not exactly what i was looking forward to but you know <laughs> i'll take sorry it's I only can. one <laughs> <laughs> only one nipple yeah no um so yeah those are the things uh, also data i'm i'm pretty sure is gonna be somebody that i'm going to enjoy as far as comic relief is concerned because i i know brent spiner is a funny guy and to see him play this robot guy i think is going to be funny too mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you've got Marina Sirtis, who, when I first saw her at a convention way back in the day, I was like, oh, my goodness, Marina Sirtis and Counselor Troy could not be more opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Marina Sirtis <laughs> is definitely acting. <laughs> She's not just reading lines. <laughs> she is acting. So it'll, it's yeah. really fun to see her now knowing her, how yeah. she's so compassionate and sweet and doesn't make fun of anybody ever in seven seasons <laughs> of next generation. And you're going to see Jordy yeah. as a baby face 
you're gonna be like who's that little stinker over there uh piloting the ship uh wesley crusher you're gonna see kind of yeah because the, the the comparisons are unavoidable i'm sure some people made the comparisons where they're like jake cisco when they're first introduced they probably thought oh this is this series uh wesley crusher type character now obviously you guys were totally different thank goodness and you know of course star trek is not gonna repeat characters they're gonna give us something new every time but yeah you're gonna get to see some of that you're gonna see some guinan you're gonna see tasha yar who everybody loved uh and uh beverly crusher beverly some great moments <laughs> there. It's it's really good Plus stuff. Plus, just the '80s. They, I mean, the '80s were just like you know Insane. the big hair. Like they were they were really good days, you know. Mm. Um, so I, I'm I'm eager to kind of see that. I also remember just the set myself being on the on the set and seeing those kind of really light and bright pastel -y colors. The, that was the thing. Every time I go to Next Generation set, it was so bright. And I'm like, wow, this is well because you guys were so <laughs> dark right yeah every time i go there i'm like dude it's fucking like I, it's bright in here uh you can see everything you know you can't have this place dirty it's you can see all the nicks <laughs> that's on the true wall. that's true on the yeah. deep space nine set if things were dirty number one it wouldn't show up on camera number two it would add to the authenticity that it's an old cardassian yeah. station yeah next generation man you better not have a cat <laughs> no yeah, i'd hate to be the, the cleaning clear the, the cleaning crew on that mm -hmm. you got it like buff everything down it's, it's all pristine um you know really light pastel -y colors with the creams and whites and like gosh this is just like i would i, I would ask people to take their shoes off <laughs> <laughs> that's so true that'd be so funny if like on the bridge they go the car just like take off your shoes number four <laughs> exactly uh well tell you what speaking of crew uh and number four we've got uh some associate producers that are banging on our door asking to come in so we're gonna let them in in just a minute because we got a lot more to talk about we're gonna talk about how much of the next generation have we actually seen we're gonna have a lot of seventh rule trivia uh, and we're gonna continue this 200th episode extravaganza we're gonna have all this like laser light show <laughs> elephants are gonna come in with ewoks on their backs it's gonna be pretty incredible <laughs> So um, right before we do that, though, however, let's give a very special thanks to Homer Frizzell. Man, that's an OG. Homer Freezy has been around. OG. He was he's yeah. our oldest G. Uh, Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel, Eve England out in Wales, Yvette Blackman, Tom Carmen, a.k.a. Skillet, Skillet, Timothy Baum, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, of course, Missouri. Grizzlies fan, uh, Bill Victor <laughs> Arukin. Uh, Titus Muller, Darlena Marie, John Mann, Dr. Muhammad Noor, Tierney C. Diekman, Anna Post, Rex A. Wood, Trekkers Against Wood. Bullying, Anil O. Palat, Erica Strom, Joe Balserati, Mike Gu, DQ. By the way, uh, Mike Gu's got some uh, holiday cards for us. Thank you to Mike Gu. Uh, oh, thanks, Mike. DQ. DQ. Neil. Neil. Asaka. You knew where I was going with that one. Justine <laughs> Norton Kurtzen, Dr. Stephanie Baker, Carrie Schwent, Faith Howell, okay. Edward Foltz, aka Crewman Guy, Radek Orshevsky out in Southwest Poland, Henry Unger, Mai live from Tokyo, Matt Boardman, Chris McGee, Justin Weir, aka Shag840, and of <laughs> course, Dr. Susan V. Gruner. <laughs> All right, but now the fun really begins. We'll be right back on the seventh rule. I, 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 I can't visualize that. <laughs> Great way to start. You don't want to know. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the seventh rule. It's Rock Lofton. It's the free for all. Hello, hello. Here comes the savagery, led oh. by Dr. Susan V. Gruner, of course. Uh, I'm in it. <laughs> don't you have a full shirt on? Let's see. I see a little red. Yes, I do actually. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice, nice, beautiful. Oh, it's an Abyssinian awesome. kiosk creation. I could try it I on the other way. Colors. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, please don't. Eve England is festive today, yeah. wearing 
<laughs> well, lights. <laughs> and is oh, that wow. a lower decks Deep, Deep Space, Space Nine, Nine shirt? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Cool. That is a cool necklace. Does it light up? It is. Yeah, it is lit. You can't really see. Oh, it's lit. Okay. Yeah, they're That's from the cool. Disney store. They sell them in the Disney store. Oh, that shirt's just like, or that necklace is just like Ciroc. Eve All right. Lit AF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Oh, cool. Abyssinian one. kiosk <laughs> mug as well. Oh, she's and, in the uh, Christmas mood. Carrie yeah. Schwent is here wearing her Ferengi eyes sweater is that new i think that might be a new one yeah yeah i like that i haven't seen color. it in green i like it in green yeah me too. Mm. yeah i went through all the colors and the green just popped for me it looks like great the with green. the yellow great background yeah, for it too yeah i like yeah, it in green too on my way home from work today oh, wow i gotta i gotta see if they have, they have a hoodie like that a green hoodie like that i think i'm gonna Possibly, get it yeah like there were that. different yeah. color options yeah yep uh Ciroc, it's your online store, so they better say yes <laughs> to whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get one of those greens. That green uh, is nice. Mm -hmm. Goldu Scott Jensen is also here wearing a radical uh, seventh rule shirt as well, designed by JJ Lendl, as is the Ferengi eyes, as is this one actually. I'm watching you. Uh, what's up, Scott? <laughs> Melissa Longo oh. is here, buried under tribbles. Oh, hi. <laughs> That's the old animated show. Chris McGee is here. He's got more technology with him than all of us combined, I think. Don't have any yeah. Star Trek shirts yet. Uh, I only I have one, but I'm saving that for our, our first episode of TNG reviews. Ooh. Ooh. So stay tuned for that. Uh, the Party Gorn is back. TJ Jackson Bay out of Missouri. <laughs> In the house. Ooh, 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 ooh. Very nice. <laughs> Somebody's Tier drinking a Klingon brain. Yeah, Tierney yeah, C. <laughs> Dickman is, uh, that's a, like a next generation impression of a very specific <laughs> episode. So this is, uh, this is based off of uh, DS9 Wharf, and it's absolutely gigantic. And if I try to drink out of it, it buries my whole head. So I need to. <laughs> but it reminds me of the mint frosting, the, the peptides thing. Remember the, the, the dream um, where Deanna's tell you a no peptide cake with crushers frosting. drinking out of Riker's head? I think. Yeah. yeah. With the straw. Yep. Uh, yep. Mint frosting. Very frosting. So look forward to that, Ciroc. All right. So <laughs> speaking of which, we're going to talk about next generation in a little bit, but right now. We have some really cool trivia, you guys. Seventh rule trivia. And it goes a little something like this. Hit it. Uh, no, 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 first of all, no, actually, no, this no, isn't no, even no. trivia. <laughs> but we're going to do quick hits. First of all, Sue, when did you first start listening to uh, the seventh rule? You know, or I don't remember. I'm thinking... Aaron was alive. So early 2019, you've been around. Yeah, around but I only listened to a couple and then I stopped because my mom, there was a lot going on it with my mom. And then when my mom died, it was right after that, literally within weeks that I joined. Mm -hmm. mm. And so that I think was September of 2021. Does that sound 2019. right? 2019. No, she died in 2012. It's been two years, almost two years. Okay. Okay. So you've been but listening I have for seen, three I have and a half seen years about. other ones. That I watched the one that you did right after he died. I watched that show. And then I went back and I watched last week the one um, with Heather. Uh, who was it? Heather and Kat. The one that we were talking about the... Second sight. Yeah, Second sight. I watched cool. that cool. last week. And yeah. where they mentioned the Bechdel test, which I didn't even know mm -hmm. what that was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eve, when did you start? You've been an OG too. You, you Homer, Anne Marie have been with us the longest, I believe. Uh, also, uh, Carmen, aka mm -hmm. Skillet, and uh, Yvette. Blackman Tom as well. 
when did you uh, start listening? Do you remember? Yeah, because I was really lucky that I randomly was looking on Twitter for Deep Space Nine stuff when I was having a, a Deep Space Nine dinner party for my birthday in the November, must have been 2018, and came across Aaron's Twitter feed. And then he was talking about the new podcast. So I yeah. kind of knew it was coming and and so started to watch it straight away. But it was quite, I remember, I don't think I was very tech savvy, but I was, I was listening to it mm-hmm. via the Odyssey radio app and it didn't always work. So I definitely missed a few episodes early on because they, I couldn't download them for some reason. But yeah, so I, yeah, been mm-hmm. listening right from the start. Shout out to Odyssey, now defunct, now it is, subspace radio. Uh, Carrie was looking away when we were asking Sue, meaning that she was thinking. She's like, when was it that I started <laughs> listening? Do you remember, Carrie, yeah, when it was? I, I want to say probably six months or so after the 2020 cruise. Okay. I think yeah. is when I started listening so a couple to years podcasts. Ago. It was, yeah, after I started at a new new job that I could listen to that I sit at a bench and put stuff put stuff together so I can listen to nice. podcasts and mm-hmm. the radio and music and stuff. So I started listening to listening to podcasts. Started off with a Gilmore Girls one that I talked <laughs> to Golda Scott about a couple a couple of times, I think. And then that's that that was sort of my entry. I'm like, okay, I love rewatching stuff. Let me see what else was was around. And I think that's when I found out about the Mm-hmm. about your guys's and the delta flyers kind of around around the same around the same time cool so a couple, just, a little more than a couple years it sounds them. like thank goodness for the gilmore yeah. girls and uh speaking <laughs> of gilmore girls uh scott jensen here loves the gilmore girls but when did you yeah, right. first start watching uh or listening to the seventh rule it was within the first five episodes because I was floating around Facebook or something like that, Ryan, and you had posted in, I want to say it was a Renegades group or something about the show had just started. And um, yeah, I, I checked, I was like, oh my God, Jake and Nog together. What? What? Let me get on this. <laughs> I do remember very, very vividly. I remember actually being at work at my old job and I was in the warehouse digging through comics and found Aaron's issue back there. Wow. Yeah. While I was listening to the JG Hertzler episode where you guys were talking to him, which I believe is episode two, if I'm not <laughs> wrong. He was very, very early on. Two or <laughs> two or three or somewhere around there. Yeah, because I thought it was pretty funny that I found that issue right as I was digging through all that. And then like <laughs> in like episode four or five, um, Aaron actually mentioned the book at one point. I was like, Oh, that's pretty funny. I had it back mm-hmm. here. Then he made a joke about somebody finding it in a dollar bin. I thought it was absolutely yeah. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the dollar bin in my store. Hell no. It was in the warehouse. It was... <laughs> now, Melissa, I guess we don't have to ask you. You probably started listening to The Seventh Rule before episode one. <laughs> yes. Much, right? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I started listening at the prep, the prep for The Seventh Rule <laughs> before mm. Episode one for right. the You're even Aaron more talking than it. about it all the time and and uh, yeah. yeah, that's even more than an OG. Yeah. I don't know. We got to come up with a new term for that. Uh, yeah. And Chris, you're a bit of a newcomer. How how long you been listening? So according to my YouTube history, uh, <laughs> apparently I started watching around July nineteenth, twenty twenty one. So a little well, over a year, but. It hasn't been like I've watched every episode. It's one of those things where every now and then one of your episodes would just pop up into my stream and I'd say, oh, I remember that episode. It's a good one. Let me see what they have to say about it. That sort of thing. Uh, I I hadn't started watching like every single one until like like the last month or so, a couple months, Uh, especially whenever you're reviewing the new series, uh, Lower Decks, uh, Prodigy, that sort of thing, because I love I love those shows so much. It's it's nice to see, you know, other people uh, mm-hmm. loving on it as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm still just the uh, the babe here, and so I haven't been what a with babe. y'all for very long. Uh, <laughs> also a babe in his own right, <laughs> TJ Jackson Bay. Uh, when did you start? You've been around for quite some time. Do you remember when you started listening? Uh, probably around the same time uh, as Carrie. Um, after the, I think it was the 2020 really? cruise. 
Uh, and I was listening on Apple Podcasts. I don't think I ever watched one until Virtual TrekCon. Mm. Wow. Mm. Okay. That's amazing. July 2020, wow. that was. Wow. It feels like you've been around forever. <laughs> like uh-huh. You feel like an OG. <laughs> yeah, you're an OG. I mm. Totally feel like an OG. I'll take the honorary. Um, so I think, yeah, probably season two-ish reviewing, uh, if, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Wow. So I mean, my time frames may be off. I'm not good at time, so. Very early on. <laughs> what is this time? <laughs> you, you're like the wormhole prophets. <laughs> you know, I think you actually oh, had that line because I watched uh, Emissary. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> that was my line. Yeah. <laughs> that was my awesome. line. Say, you say it that. again. I think C- uh, C- Cisco tell, is trying to tell me about time and while I'm a, a wormhole alien and I'm like, oh, time. What is this time is this? you're talking about? Time? <laughs> There's no time to argue about the timeline. We Everybody knows that. The time. yeah. Deanna <laughs> Troy, you got it. Uh, yep. Tierney, what's up, Tierney? When when did you start listening? And was it December of, wow, was it only December of last year? It's it literally one year yeah. minus a day. What? Yeah, the 16th wow. of I went back to confirm yeah. um that it has been exactly a year since my first FFA. I'm so sorry everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm blurting. That was my I'm... line. <laughs> <laughs> but my you're amazing me. and I am yeah. still learning how to just sh- shut the hell up. Um but it it <laughs> It kind of varies because when I first found out about it, um, I think we had just moved into this house. So I I could be right or wrong. I want to say very early on. um, I I don't know if 2017 is correct. I don't remember what year you guys started. Um, January of 2019. No, I'm wrong. Um, Huh. I'm messing up something timeline wise. It might have been a change in job or something. Something was new at the time. I remember that there was some sort of life change going on. So we started a <laughs> DS9 watch through for comfort. And uh, James and I were thinking we were seeing we were watching an episode where where Jake and Nog were having one of their moments. Uh, I think it was when you were were teaching him how to read. And it's just the cutest oh my goodness. goddamn thing. And <laughs> I really hope that they're friends, like still friends in real mm. life. And Jim was just like, you know, we have the internet and it's creepy. I bet we can find out. And we did a little Googling <laughs> and it came up and you guys had not been on for very long. And you're like, this is pretty awesome. It was a little rough, but it was pretty awesome. So it's a little rough. It was a little rough. <laughs> wasn't but, rough. Uh, we we we, uh, we did yeah. look into it a little bit, and I I never was the YouTube person, not the podcast person. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm techy, but I much prefer my acoustic manual. I can hold it in my hands, sort of things. Um, but he was, so it would mm-hmm. pop up in streams every now and then when he'd be surfing through YouTube. So we'd catch up every once in a while, and then. Um, it it just fell by the wayside for a bit, just work and job. And then um, for our seventh anniversary, he got me a few cameos. And I mm. think the only Star Trek people at the time were Garrett Wong and, uh, and Aaron. Mm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. our anniversary is September 1st. And that was 2019. No way. Mm. And we found out why it didn't go yeah. through. And so we pulled it up and we pulled up videos and we pulled up Twitter feeds and we cried and were upset. And it just kind of became a thing. So still kept it in, in our hearts and in the back of our minds. And then, you know, a year ago, and then he ran down the stairs 
a, f- a month or so before my birthday and was like, hey, you want to do this? It's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're being really vague here. And then then sent me all the information. I'm like, oh, God, I have to get dressed and be on camera and talk to people <laughs> once a week. It's my favorite thing. But oh, God. Um, so <laughs> it's we just don't mind kind of- bathrobes. We don't really have to get dressed. We just <laughs> Basically, put a I cloak mean, on and wear shorts you know, and sandals. Today, <laughs> today, with that, well, we're we're not doing it because of internet outage. And then twenty minutes later, oh no, guys, we're doing it. Do you know how quickly I got dressed today? I had a whole <laughs> festive plan. But uh, so, you know. yeah, but uh, the early days were a little rough. Agreed. But here at the seventh rule, we learn by doing. <laughs> we don't learn first and then do. We learn as we go. <laughs> Thanks to all of you. Mai, what's up, hey. Mai? You're floating around. Just You're about to fly out to Austria. In. Do you remember? Yeah, I got a time. Do you remember when you first started listening to the Seventh Rule? Yeah, I listened to it in spits and spurts for a little bit, and then about three or four months ago, decided to really get into it and listened, lurked, uh, for uh, did the chat pack thing for a, a couple of episodes. And I thought, you know what? I can't even go a week without this, so I'm going to join. The heck with it. I'm going to come out of my shell because despite what anybody else may think, I feel like I'm a massive introvert, and this is pushing myself to get out there and talk to people, Aww. so that was really good. Um, I never got a chance to meet Aaron, and it really sucks, but with you and you, Sirach, you, Lisa, I feel like I'm really getting that vibe, and it's just it's, it's amazing. So I don't know. I'm, I'm like – about TJ, he's not a babe in his own right. TJ is a righteous babe, so we'll give him yep. that. Yep, um, yep. Party but I gorn. think uh, I, I, I saw I saw all these people. Um, I, I get to know them on a weekly basis, and a couple weeks ago, when we had a week with no with with no FFA, I was like, yeah, kind of thing, you know. So this is, um, yeah, no, it's it's not been long, but it's been very intense, and I feel super warm when I'm joining, and afterwards, I like, got a glow going. So thanks. To the three of you guys who run it and bring air and spirit to all of us and to all of the rest of you who just are crazy cool. Thanks, Mai. We, we love you, Mai. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and Aaron would have loved you, no doubt about mm-hmm. that. Who wouldn't? Absolutely. I, yeah. That's, <laughs> uh, I feel like and I'm your, love and your insight and your insight and perspective mm-hmm. is very, Especially very enough. unique and, and really good. Love to hear how you analyze things. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, and you're still the only person that say, made I... memes for us, like as <laughs> in like for the free for all. You made graphics, oh, right? <laughs> uh, we'll yeah. tell you what, guys. I, we've I we've feel got like a... I'm at the, the feet of masters when I'm joining with you guys, especially Sirox insights, re- literature re- references, biblical re- references. It's I, I learn every time I'm on here, and I love that aspect of being here because I've I've learned a lot in my life but every time i come on here i learn something new and I, that's so fresh for me i love i love that all right well now we're about to learn a lot more you guys here it comes <laughs> here it comes this is the Uh-oh. trivia that we've promised Uh-oh. so question number one is how many t7r2 episodes have we done no cheating no peeking how T7R2, everybody at home, that is the, the new Star Trek, you know, that's Strange New Worlds, uh, Prodigy, Discovery, Lower Decks, and Picard. Do you, anybody know how many of those we've that done? Scott knows. Yeah, it's yeah. Scott should know because I'm, I'm, I'm taking myself out of this. Yeah. <laughs> we've got the answer explicitly. at the end of every episode. <laughs> we've got the number. I think it's more like 60 or 70. Mm, yeah, that's probably right. No. <laughs> Scott, like, do you want to tell him? 47. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to say anything. It's it's all like I'll give you a hint. Way higher, like 200 something closer. Oh, yep. Wow. 102. Oh. Well, 70 is not that so far. I I <laughs> 102. Uh, like 32. <laughs> but 47, we have done 47 of another series of videos. Do you guys know what that is? 
47. Captain Nog forever. Captain Nog. Yep. Yeah. Uh, TJ knows. Very nice. Uh, so this one's going to be even crazier. I even have to kind of look this up. I've got a really close idea, but I need to make sure. The question is, can you guess, anybody guess, how many videos in total we have on the Seventh Rule YouTube channel? Yeah. One thousand. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. In total, like <laughs> including clips and stuff. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's loads. All of videos. It. Yep. One million. A dollar. Seven hundred sixty-eight. Dollar. Five hundred. Dollar. Fifty cents. Five hundred. If we if we have one ninety something. And then a preview for each one, double that. Then all the twos. Oh, yeah, it's got to be about six, seven hundred. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Seven hundred fifty. I just looked. I cheated. Whoa, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drawer full of jelly beans, and you got to guess how many oh, jelly beans. I'm always <laughs> bad at those. <laughs> How many? How many triples are behind the right now? Count <laughs> them. Sue, uh, what's the answer, Sue? You're really close to a thousand. Ah, oh, yes. Nine hundred sixty-five. It says. Oh, wow. Fifteen point three thousand subscribers. That's Ooh. so awesome. And how Maybe many we views? Get that up to twenty. Doesn't doesn't say but you started in 2018 19 yeah 19. january 2019 mm. january 14th 2019 and uh we are currently at 1 million 84,000 views what oh. that's amazing <laughs> <Woo -hoo. Yeah. laughs> <A large> number. <laughs> it is wow okay Here's another piece of trivia. Who edited 19 seventh rule videos? It's, it's Heather? Either, no, it's either uh, Aaron or Jared. <laughs> yeah. Jared, right? Ryan definitely edited 19. Like the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's Mr. Aaron Eisenberg. He edited the entire first season of Deep Space Nine. Wow. And I encourage everybody to go back and check it out because he added a cool little graphic at the beginning where it would go like the seventh rule pew or something like that. It was really cool. <laughs> he was wow. good at editing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was. Now, I'm going to go back and watch them all because I obviously only listened to them because I was yeah. a complete idiot and didn't realize that you could watch them or get them other than through Odyssey radio app, which was really temperamental for me. So I, I need to go back and watch them all. Yeah, same here. Mm. Me too. Ooh, I didn't know you had do that, that thing. Go back and review the reviews. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I want to yeah. see his edit. Yeah. Oh, they're like pretty the cool. There's pretty cool graphics on there. Yeah, oh. a little sound effect. Oh. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so final, final quick hits here is about people's appearances on the show. So excluding myself and Ciroc, who or after myself and Strock, who has the third most appearances on the seventh rule? Must be Melissa. Melissa. Yeah. Yeah, be Melissa. Yep. Uh she has a total of, and this is why she's such a football fan, 49 <laughs> episodes. <laughs> uh you guys know who's fourth? Aaron? No. <laughs> 35 wow. episodes but this is where it gets tricky who's fifth with 16 ira? episodes ira oh, yeah. or armin uh, oh yeah that's wow. my guess yeah. Yeah. armin yeah, good guess armin maybe it's jared cooper of course Oh, the, the oh, first wow. 16. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. See, this is tough trivia. Okay, but then who is sixth with nine? Armin. Say that again. 
who has i'm gonna say armin <laughs> who, who is in sixth place with nine appearances i just wanted to make you say six nine again <laughs> yeah. nine nice uh i'm gonna go with armin too it's actually mr iris stephen bear oh wow wow that's okay. cool that's fun. <laughs> yeah so he is our most frequent guest uh and then seventh kind of a little gap there with six appearances any guesses for who that is <laughs> See uh, previous answer. I'm gonna go out on and say yeah. Armin. <laughs> yeah. Robert Hewitt. I've already Wolf. been out on that. Uh, what? <laughs> okay. yeah. Robert. Oh, Hewitt getting Wolf. wrong. <laughs> Changing my next answer. All right, <laughs> we're almost to the top. Finishing the top ten. Number eight with five appearances is who? Oh no. <laughs> Nana, 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 it's Chase Masterson. Oh, oh wow. my God. We don't remember anything. <laughs> well, because Armin and, and then really... they've been on also the T7R2 uh, uh, episodes. They've been on the CNFs. They've done virtual Trek cons. You know, this is just a specific to these 200. So now there's a two-way tie for ninth place with four appearances. And who are those two people? Armin and Anna. Yes. <laughs> yes. Finally. Finally. Please, somebody put us out of our memory. <laughs> All right. Other notables are with three episodes, J.G. Hertzler, Dr. Muhammad Noor, and Nikki DeBoer. Uh, with two episodes, uh, Hana Hate, Tracy Coco, Kat R. King, Kim Friedman, director, Ethan Kalk, writer, and Jack Trevino, writer, and then a bunch of people that joined us once. But since we have uh, seven minutes left, you guys. What? In Since we have like seven minutes left, you guys. <laughs> in in uh, 10 seconds or less. We'll go around the room here. What do you think Ciroc will feel the most when watching The Next Generation? Will it be amusement? Disappointment? Will it be nostalgia? Confusion? <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? What do you think, Sue? Initially horror. <laughs> Whoa. What? <laughs> Whoa, it's a thriller. Hey, I was a series thriller. original series fan, and I can remember the first the first one. But then slowly he's gonna warm up to it and he's gonna love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know what? Before we do that, let's establish this. Sirak, you have seen some next generation episodes, right? Well, you said you saw a few maybe like on the cruise or little bits and pieces. What would you estimate you've seen? Like bits and pieces of a few episodes or what? No. No, I haven't seen any full episode wow. of Next Generation. I've seen just like sporadic wow. passing by passing That's by the stunning. TV. What about the original it. series? Have you seen any of those? That I did see on the cruise, this last cruise. Mm. Um, just because I was, you know, it was running on repeat on the TV. So <laughs> I did watch fun. some of the original series episodes, a, a couple of just random episodes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I saw a little bit of that, but so I have never be... watched a Next Generation episode. Oh, okay. I thought you maybe had seen some on the cruise, but this will be completely fresh eyes for you. That's even better. And I'll tell you for me, I'm not even 100% sure that I've seen all of the episodes of The Next Generation, to be honest. What? I probably, you know, I think, I feel like I have, but I feel like there are going to be some episodes early on that I'm going to say, I have no memory of this place, right? Like Gandalf <laughs> says, right? I have no memory of this yeah. place in the minds of Moria. Um, some of them I've seen a bunch of times. Some I've seen once or twice. And I feel like it's possible that there are going to be a ton that I've seen, but that I've forgotten. 
because it was so long ago. Yeah. Uh, it was like in the 90s when I'd seen it or early 2000s. And some I may have never seen it. So I think the first two or three seasons, it's going to be... It's gonna be well, really... how old were you, Ryan, when you saw it? I mean, you had to have been like 10 or something. It's when like... I first... Right. Oh, this is depressing. When I first <laughs> saw my, my first like next generation rerun was what when was, I think I was... What year I was, did it come out? 85? It was 80? 87 to 94. I, I think I was, I was like 16 or 17 and I was sick home from school and Star <laughs> Trek came on the TV and I couldn't reach the remote. I was too sick. I was like, oh no, I don't want to watch this crap. And it was really good. <laughs> and so the next day after school, I was like, I wonder if that Star Trek thing's on at the same time. And I put it on again and it was really good again. I was like, okay, you convinced me. I was like, why does nobody like this show? It's got aliens and lasers and spaceship this is great stuff. What, what, what was I thinking? This is good. <laughs> anyway, I was 31 when it section. When it came out. Uh, <laughs> so real quick, everybody, that being said, now that you know that Sirach has not seen any of this, Eve, what do you think will be the prevailing feeling that he'll have the first season or two? Dismay. Dismay. <laughs> Dismay. That's, that, that's how I'm feeling. That's how he's, I'm feeling. He's really yeah. feeling encouraged by you guys right now. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Terror, dismay. <laughs> horror. It's horror, just horror. to be clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about yeah, you, I'm kind, of the, I'm kind of the same, yeah. So but it oh, gets no. better. That's so sad. Because Eve hasn't watched Next Generation either. So she's going to be a first timer too. She's on this boat with us. Oh wow! But I've I've seen the sort of little thing, the the, the thumbnails on Netflix on it. Mm. Oh, that's good enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Carrie? Prevailing feeling from Ciroc. Uh, sometimes amusement, sometimes confusion. Probably a mix. So we'll call it amused confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Sirog, like that's that. scary for you. What do you, what do you think, uh, Scott? <laughs> um, I don't think it's going to be as difficult as the first season of Discovery's Klingon for Sirog. I like Klingon <laughs> talk. Time Ooh, crystals. Um, point. I don't think it's going to be as difficult as that. So I think he's already over the hump of how hard it's going to be for him. Um, <laughs> um, just knowing how Sirog <laughs> looks at stuff, though, and looking at the little stuff that he picks out of it, I think he's going to have a lot of fun with that. So. Mm -hmm. I'll be optimistic and say that uh, definitely by like season three, he's going to respect the hell out of a lot of it. So I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's season one is going to be a lot of, mm, he might yeah. give us a bigger appreciation mm -hmm. for next generation by finding stuff that we missed in seven viewings. Uh, what do you think, Melissa? Yeah, What's going to be the, the prevalent feeling he's going to have? Fascination. <laughs> Ooh, one can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh what do you think chris i think initially initially disappointment perhaps even a little bit of disgust with <laughs> one or two episodes that come to mind <laughs> but eventually acceptance and, and morphing into intrigue and eventually joy. <laughs> that sounds like the steps of grief yeah the steps, steps of grief, of grief <laughs> next generation grief uh, uh, healing for real <laughs> what do you think tj <laughs> okay i'm i'm playing the long game here and <laughs> what I'm really you know interested or, or looking forward to is uh, seeing the connections with the other shows that Ciroc has watched and seeing oh this you know this isn't new this is this was here you know in, mm. in the next generation also I'm looking forward to seeing uh, those type of reactions and um and and just really seeing him, uh, you know, get um, a spin of the this kind of alien of the week type mm -hmm. of adventure, um, yeah, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. all of that. But so, yeah, there will definitely be some uh, kind of moments. Oh, yeah. so uh, far, everybody's <laughs> being good about not giving spoilers. This is great stuff. I was really but about to give. I know, but you did I mean, literally. <laughs> what do you think, Mai? What do you think Sirach's going to feel above all in the first season or two? I think pride. I think pride. Um, Surprise. A sort of pounding pride. his chest uh, uh, oh, comparison pride. sort of feeling of pride. Um, 
Yeah, because of what he's been a part of with his series. And then also that's going to mutate into pride as part of being part of the bigger flow of Star Trek because mm. I'm old enough to have been sitting there waiting for TNG to start and hearing about it and announce all that kind of stuff. And mm. having watched all of the series go through and, and knowing that he's been part of one of <laughs> one of the greatest, uh, I think he's going to feel pride about that, but I think he's going to feel pride about the whole flow of, of Star Trek as well, too. So mm-hmm. pride is what I would say. That's a good one. Uh, lastly, Tierney, Tierney, what do you think? Pride, confusion, horror? What, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, all of the above, but um, my definitely took some of the thoughts right out of my head. And um, but my my thought was just connection. And mm-hmm. hopefully besides all of the not so fun feelings of, oh, my God, what the hell am I watching? Um, exuberance, <laughs> because. <laughs> You and Eve, too. Oh, my God. You guys get to see this for the first time. If I can get that feeling back, especially at this age and this stage in my life, which yeah. right now, actually going into it with this group, I'm really excited for. I've never been this excited to re- you know, rewatch TNG. I really hope that <laughs> you can feel, Sirach, again, like Maya had said, the, mm-hmm. that you're part of this, of this world that means so much to all of us and so many other people in existence um as ridiculous as it can be and as hard as this transition was for them to make happen because we're going in fresh season one it's it's um Mm. it's 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 a little ground beefy in -hmm. places but um that's one way to describe it it's well it's a little beyond rough we are we've been we've been talking about it in voice especially uh in discord we're excited to get your insights on a few episodes specifically because i think um i think you got half some so uh i i'm hoping mostly instead of going with like like uh, ryan had said what is this i don't want to watch this crap uh what he, what he was saying <laughs> you're going to feel more like all right i am ready for the next mm-hmm. episode with only a little bit of apprehension of oh god i don't want to do this and, and speaking uh, of yeah. uh ready for the next episode so sorry but we gotta run uh but everybody <laughs> will join us for the next episode uh in which we review the next generation uh encounter at far point Sirak is regretting it already <laughs> based no! on all this stuff. No. no you're gonna love it Sirak. We're gonna have some fun, but we gotta run okay uh so thank you to sue eve carrie scott melissa chris tj my and tierney we will see you all on the flip side it's time for the next generation we'll see you next time on the seventh rule